In this video, I'm going to be responding to Steven Anderson, who posted a video on his YouTube explaining why he believes that 1 Corinthians 11 is not dealing with a material head covering, but is only dealing with a woman's long hair. Now, he gives two reasons in this clip, and I'm going to respond to both, so let's get into that video. Every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Now, some people mistake this and they think that the covering is like a hat or uh, some kind of a fabric covering, especially in Eastern Europe. This is very prevalent head coverings on women. The Amish will do this. The Mennonites will do this. They're even head covering Baptists and everything. This doctrine of covering with a hat or a scarf or a shawl like a Muslim would do can easily be proven to be a false doctrine. I'm going to just demolish it right now. Okay. First of all, number one, the Bible tells us what the covering is in this passage. It says right here in verse 14, did not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering. So what covering are we talking about here? When we talk about being covered or uncovered, we're talking about long hair versus short hair. Now, I absolutely agree that verses 14 and 15 is speaking about hair. That's very clear by the context. So I'm not denying that and trying to make that read a material covering. I believe that 1 Corinthians 11 is dealing with two coverings. The main point of the passage is that a woman is to wear a covering when praying and prophesying. However, in verses 14 and 15, he introduces an argument to show the appropriateness of this head covering. So he says, does not even nature. So when he says does not even, he's introducing a new argument. He's saying, look over here and examine this. Doesn't this uh, show the appropriateness of head covering? He's saying, like, nature shows that a woman has long hair. She's covered. And a man doesn't have long hair. He has short hair. He's uncovered. Look at what nature teaches us. And that shows that it's in line with what, uh, what women and men are to do when praying and prophesying. It's also important to note that the Greek word for covering mentioned in verse 15 is a completely different Greek word than what he had been using for covering all throughout this passage. So that even is an indication by Paul himself that he's speaking about something different here in verses 14 and 15. There are two coverings, not one. Now, the other side will say, well, that's just a covering, but you need another covering of fabric. Here's why that's false. Because the Bible says here that it is not right for a man to pray or prophesy having his head covered, right? Yeah. It's a shame. It dishonors Christ. And that if the woman prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, it's a shame to her head. Who's her head? Man. The man, her husband. Okay, well then riddle me this. Why in the entire Old Testament did all the priests who prayed and prophesied Wear a hat the whole time. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. All throughout the Old Testament, Aaron and Aaron's sons, they wore specific clothing, and one of those pieces of clothing was a miter or a bonnet or some kind of a headwear. So these Mennonites and Amish and people with their bonnets on, and they say, well, we're, you know, covering our heads like the Bible says, they're wearing a bonnet. You know, the only bonnet in the Bible was worn by a man. And it was commanded by God to be worn by that man. The priests in the Old Testament, they're preaching, they're praying, they're serving God in a bonnet. That's what the Bible says, that they had their heads covered. So if this were talking about fabric on your head, that would contradict the entire Old Testament law. Now, yes, it's true that priests in the Old Covenant did wear something on their heads. I'm not disputing that at all. But I also don't find it problematic. 
And the reason is, is because I recognize that there's a distinction between the old covenant and the new covenant. And you need to understand that head covering was not commanded under the old covenant. So it wasn't breaking that law. It wasn't going against what the priests were told to do. See, we understand that each covenant has its own rules and regulations. And head covering is a uniquely new covenant symbol. So it wasn't commanded to people under the old covenant. Now let me illustrate this further by just using two commands we all understand. Baptism is a command, it's not an option. So were the old covenant believers in sin for not being baptized? Well, no, they weren't because that command wasn't given to them. They were never told that they had to be baptized. Well, what about circumcision? You could read circumcision in the Bible and that's also a command. Are Gentile believers in sin for not being circumcised today? No, that's clear that that is not a command for us under the new covenant that was specifically for the old covenant. See, we recognize that there's a distinction in the law between the covenants. Each covenant has its own rules and regulations and its own ceremonial laws. I mean, under the old covenant, uh, we understand that there was different things that defiled them, that made them ceremonial unclean, that they could eat certain types of foods, and that those laws do not apply to us in the new covenant. Likewise, we have our own ceremonial laws regarding, you know, baptism and the Lord's Supper and about head covering, and there's others too. And so each of these laws are unique to their own covenant, and it only poses a problem if you try to flatten the Bible and don't look at that distinction between covenants. Now, that was just a brief response to the two points that Stephen brought up in his sermon on 1 Corinthians 11, but I actually have a video where I give five different reasons for why I reject the long hair view of head covering and I also go into that in chapter 8 in my book head covering a forgotten Christian practice for modern times so you can check out those two resources if you want to go further and learn more about that view thanks for watching